All right, welcome to September 12th Sandbox Review Meeting with TOC and TAG Chairs. Ricardo, passing to you. Yeah, so welcome everyone. So um, today we have 10 projects to, to review, 10 submissions to Sandbox. Um, we can get started already. Um, the first one is Copacetic. Copacetic. This is a tool to uh, patch vulnerabilities in containers in kind of a special way where the patches are done directly on container images um, according to the vulnerabilities of tools like Trivi. Um, and I think the main feature is that they are patched without having to go through um, upstream and a full rebuild. So I don't know if uh, anyone had a look into this project and has comments. I can start. Um, so I, I spent a little bit of time going through this because I feel like we've talked about this one before, or I know I've seen it before. Um, it is solving an existing problem. There, the they talk about it either within the application or somewhere on one of their documentations or sites. Um, most organizations are having a lot of trouble keeping up with updates <laughs> to production because they haven't quite streamlined their build pipeline to do uh, deployments in a more automated fashion, particularly for security uh, fixes. So it's it's nice in that it's solving that problem. It can function as an SLA stopgap. My only concern, and this is something that I think that the project is going to have to figure out how to strike this nice balance, is how do we avoid codifying anti-patterns? Because realistically, um, we want organizations to be improving their build pipelines so that they can automate their deployments in a much faster way. Um, and this provides them a different mechanism for managing that. Um, so I, I think that would be the only concern that I have. I also noticed that while they currently support Trivi, they don't have any other scanners that I could come across within the repository that they're um, actively integrated with, but they do have plans to support this um, SARIF format um, in the future, which most scanners I believe provide outputs into, but it's unclear from the existing documentation that I was able to come across how all of that actually is intending to work together in the future. Right. There was also, um, there was a presentation to uh, tax security. The recording is here. I don't know if anyone attended that and has more feedback. I watched it. It, they they seem to be like they know the problem space fairly well, and I think that they're er, they're early in solving the problem, but not too early. So I think they they are a good candidate for experimentation within the ecosystem. All right. So if no one has any more feedback, I guess we put it up for a vote. Is that correct, Emily? Sounds good. We do votes after the call. So we we do most of the discussions here right, right. and then right. Amy will graciously open everything at the end. But you but tell we, me which ones you actually want exactly. to vote on. And this one you've told me you want to vote on. Well done. Hooray. So that's what I meant. Just open that's it up for a vote. Fine. Yeah. Cool. All right. It's going to go up for a right. vote. Thank you. First is done. So the next one is the logging operator. So there is um, uh, also something uh, particular in here, which is, um, it seems to be managing uh, more complex um, or targeting more complex configurations of inputs, outputs for uh, logs and routing. Um, they have also presented presented to uh, tag observability, if I'm not correct, or they will present. I couldn't find that. I actually checked in the in the agenda, and I put it here quickly. But I don't think there's any any apart from the slides that are linked. I couldn't find any kind of uh, notes that I might have been taken about it. I don't know if anyone has more information.
Uh, no, okay, I'm mixing up. So there is actually some, some, no, this is just, yeah, I don't think they, we had uh, more notes about the presentation. Check on someone from observabilities here. So, any thoughts on this one? It seems pretty mature and well supported. So, um, seems quite, and has a lot of different integrations. Seems quite, quite seems quite a good fit. Yep, I agree with Justin. I'm actually kind of curious why apply it sandbox instead of incubation, since it's been around for a while and seems to have some adopters. All right. I think when I was looking. Perhaps the question, why not incubation? Um, when I was looking at the, the contribution, it seems like there is one main maintainer that kind of prevails throughout time. We don't have so many uh, contributions, consistent contributions from other maintainers, so hopefully. Okay. Hmm. I'm wondering if I looked at the wrong repository. I might have looked at the wrong repository, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one looks uh, like it's extensively uh, yeah, has quite a lot of... better. I think I looked at the sub uh, sub repository. I looked at the work directly and I clicked on a different repository. So please ignore my comments. I mean, it's possible they just didn't want to do the DD because it's a lot of work. Uh, so should we ask them uh, if they would consider it? Um, and then either if they really want to go for sandbox first, we open it for a vote. Otherwise, we suggest applying directly for incubation. I'm actually kind of inclined to push back a little bit from sandbox, particularly for a project that appears to be as mature as this one is. Um, we have a lot of projects in the sandbox ecosystem and like based off of recent EOC discussions, we really want to promote more experimentation, more innovation within sandbox. So if there's an opportunity for us to identify and recognize projects that are more mature, have they're a little bit further beyond, um, I'm curious whether or not we should start inviting them to apply at incubation so we can do a little bit more deep dive analysis on them. So I think I agree with you know, Emily on this. Uh, I think, you know, given its current its diversity of containers, I think it's uh, um, probably it's a better fit for sandbox projects. And then we can see how it goes. Does the number of contributors affect our desire to follow up the incubation? I didn't get it, sorry. Uh, it was breaking up a bit though. Sorry, I'm I'm unfortunately driving, but I was asking, does the number of it of contributors affect our desire to pull them in to incubation? From the repo, it sounds like it, no? Uh, something to double check on due diligence, but it looks okay. Okay. But is this something perhaps we can help them with throughout the incubation? I think they definitely have potential. Um, so this is something that we can list as criteria or they can go through the criteria and they need any extra support or anything from the TOC or the tags would be able to help them throughout. Um, as mentioned, I think this is definitely a good candidate to move a level higher. I think, yeah, I, we definitely can suggest that. It's uh, it's up to them to, to push through the processes, of course. Yeah, I was going to say that some of these projects uh, or, or project maintainers don't know the whole process. So the first thing they might have seen is just sandbox. But uh, I mean, we can actually communicate with them and let them know what the process is and guide them through if they want to go for incubation. All right. So uh, Chris also had left a thought that maybe they are just applying for sandbox to understand better uh, how an open source project can go bigger. Uh, but I guess the we 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 suggest that they apply for incubation for now. And uh, Eva, go. Are we are we saying 
no, we're not going to vote on Sandbox. We're going to ask them to apply for incubation instead. Or are we going to say, let's vote on Sandbox and ask them to apply for incubation right away? Oh, that's a good question. Using the Sandbox queue to um, allow them to go through all the onboarding. That way it, it makes that incubation due diligence process a little bit easier. I think that's a good idea. Amy, probably you're also the best to I think okay, so like Adam yes, add them to a vote so that because like I I know we're interested in being able to clear the queues. Um if we say, hey, look, we think you're actually like ready for incubation. Um let's put it up to a vote. If it passes, we'll work through them with onboarding and kind of like give them a sense about like what incubation means for them. And then they can decide whether or not they want to apply. Cool. Sounds like a good, good time. Right. Uh, Vote. Yeah. We can move on. All right. So the next one is uh, Kraken. Um, so this is a chaos and re resilience testing tool for Kubernetes, focusing on evaluating performance and our loads and at scale. Um, so that's there's a nice uh, picture here of uh, how this works. Uh, I have seen this project in the past as well. Um, I believe they also, I know, in this case, they did not uh, present yet, but uh, I think there was a suggestion here to, to go for it. Um, any immediate thoughts on this one? There's a nice picture here of uh, how they integrate the different APIs. Sorry, like is it this. so? Is this all the repos under Red Hat Chaos? So we can... Yeah, they oh. should be all in that namespace. Uh oh, is it all of them? Uh, yeah, because it's. On, let me look. We, I think we've. I'm not sure if we're. We tried to make that question less confusing, but we put org repo URL, but. Right, so that's yeah, but it's your... not it's not really clear to me which it is whether it's so they do link an additional repo which is a different um different project. I don't yeah, I don't see anything in this GitHub org that would not be considered part of Kraken that would be donated. It looks like they already took out anything that was like tied to Red Hat products. So looking at the form that we put together for this, um, the project repo URL is supposed to be in scope of the application and the additional repos in scope of the application. So that's the additional repos area. Um, the org repo URL is provide the, the URL of the GitHub or GitLab organization of the projects if all repos under the org are in scope of the application, if no organization provide NA. So it sounds like we can clean that up to make it a little bit more clear, but just looking at the way we have the instructions written, it sounds like Kraken and Cerberus are the only two that would be in scope, but we should clarify with the project. Do they have any additional ones that would not be in scope? I think that's, that was Justin's question. What? Well, no, I was just, I wish, and the Cerberus is included. Oh, in that case, I think it's everything because yeah. they're either about Kraken or Cerberus or the other ones, I think. I oh, know there's, I oh, know there's other things as well. No, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, um, I'm looking over this. Everything in that GitHub org is either Kraken or Cerberus. Um, or or a dependency like GitHub Actions for you know um, the um, oh, manage services deploy. Uh, that's actually a deployment thing. That's the one thing that um, it's actually probably the only thing that uh, uh, I don't know why they left that in there because right now it's only OpenShift. So that would be one that you'd want to ask the project. 
hey, mm -hmm. is this going to support core Kubernetes or are you going to take it out? Um, it's it's just a set of playbooks, set of Ansible playbooks. So it uh, doesn't seem to be very active either. Yeah, and it yeah it, it either could be something that they left in there because they're planning on making it support core Kubernetes, but they haven't finished yet, or it's something that was left in there by mistake when they were actually cleaning it up to separate out, you know, just the things that were being contributed. And right. you just have to ask. Yeah, and apart from the repos and the org, uh, does this sound like something we would say for a vote? Uh, Cassie, go ahead. Um, so I'm wondering whether they have presented this to the Kubernetes community, to those six, um, because I see that, you know, um, there are some scenarios, uh, Kubernetes scenarios they do not support, like the pop network scenarios, um, but they support that in the open shift. So it's more targeted towards open shift. So I, I, I would like to know what is the Kubernetes community's feedback on this project, you know, how useful it is. And also how good is a like is a design. All right. So I don't I don't from from the from what is here, I don't think they have, but I'm not completely sure. Yeah, maybe we can ask them to get some present to the communities community and give some feedback so we can, you know, better evaluate this. Because there are other quite some, you know, um chaos or resilient resilience testing. Tool testing mechanisms. Yeah, we can take this on the app delivery side to have them present. I think they did not yet present, and there's also still the dedicated chaos working group. Uh, that was what Josh was proposing. Uh, but let's ask them to present there, and uh, we will then share feedback after we have the recording. And so, the Alois, you will you will drop them a message here in the GitHub yes, I will. <clears throat> I'll take this one. Thanks. All right. I see Amy already took notes. So we can move to the next one, which is canister. So as far as I understand, this is quite uh, known um, as, a, as a project. Uh, it's uh, focusing on data protection or in uh, at least my knowledge is more on the backup and recovery side of things. Um, and it's very similar to projects like Valero as well. Uh, one thing that I would highlight is that they mentioned here some presentations. So they actually mentioned a presentation from a colleague of mine. So we know this uh, project quite well. And uh, yeah, they describe it as, uh, um, I think the, it's the, what Restic does with Valero. Um, they have similar tools that don't do to what Beller is doing, basically the same space. So I see Kathy, uh, you have the hand up. Oh, or sorry. Emily. No. Oh, it's Emily. It's Emily. Uh, sorry, Emily, go ahead. Yeah, so I had a question about this one. Is it really data protection or is it more data management with some security features added in? That, that's what I couldn't get specific clarification on when I was going over the project documentation. It seems like it's it's primarily uh, proper data management with a little bit of some of those features sprinkled in, but not specifically focused on data protection in cloud architectures. So uh, I've, I've used Canister before um, and um, the best way of describing it is it's it's provides workflows for different stateful workloads to allow you to do things like um quiescing databases and things like that before you actually do snapshots and backups so it's not actually the it's not actually the backup tool it's the tool that you use with your backup tool to safely back up your databases kind of thing it's it's for more complex backups Yeah, you are unmuted. 
Right. So we, we use it as exactly that to define policies for backup and uh, restore um, based on PVCs and uh, and automating that. And then the actual backup tool and copy is, uh, is using this copia tool. Uh, I don't remember exactly if copia is part of canister or if it's just using it underneath. I believe it's not part of it's canister. Another, copia is another open source project yep. that canister is using. Uh, actually, Valara is also using copia now. So. Right, yeah. So I think it's in the same space as Valero. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's why I asked them to uh, put together this comparison table. That'll be helpful. Um, I mean, in general, I do think this is a great candidate, uh, GPA sandbox project in CNCF. Uh, I just, there are some comments that I still want them to address, but but it's uh, I, I do not have objections for them to become a sandbox project. I do know it's used in production in a number of large organizations. Okay, so it seems like it goes for a vote as well. Objections, I will take that and we can move on. All right, the next one is KCP, which is uh, for managing control planes of Gordon's clusters, I guess. Um, um, and they mentioned uh, also management of publications, um, other parts of the infrastructure, and specifically H and IT. Um, so it seems to be like a sort of API uh, building on Kubernetes APIs to to manage additional things that are not just containers. I'm gonna check again if there was, okay, so there's quite a lot of follow-up here. Let's just gonna check. There was there a, a yeah, go ahead. Go Sorry. ahead, Josh, sir. Okay, um, KCP is actually a multi-cluster solution. Um, it's a way of maintaining a meta cluster that controls other Kubernetes clusters. Uh, the CP stands for control plane. Um, it does this somehow using CRDs. Um, I did attend Stefan's presentation on it, but I don't really understand the architecture. Um, but, but that is the intent of the tool. Um, and it's had this point over a year of development, um, um, possibly um, a little bit more than that. Um, the um, actually probably closer to two years of development. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I see that it is like a, um, this project virtualize the control plan, and not just virtualize. You know the um, the OS or the um, the resources. It virtualizes the Kubernetes control plan, and then it provides, you know, across, um, like you know, um, just said, you know, multi-cluster uh, management, but it's logical clusters, not really okay. physical clusters. Yeah, it's logical clusters. I think it's interesting, um, but I, I, but it didn't say very clearly what is the, um, you know, the the benefit of this, you know, um, compared with other. Um, solutions because there are other solutions that's doing you know across logic logical clusters management. It doesn't say that very clearly. As I understand it, the goal of KCP was to be a little bit more tightly integrated with Kubernetes mechanisms. Um, that is to to work through aggregated APIs and the CRD mechanism in order to supply multi-cluster functionality rather than doing so through a more external tool like OCM or Crossplay. Um, uh, but I, I haven't seen a detailed comparison either. Uh, Stefan's presentation did not really compare it to other tools. So I think Ricardo, you have the hand raised as well. Yeah, they had a presentation in tag runtime and um, 
the project is pretty extensive. Uh, yeah, I think the the control plane is actually meant to manage other things than, I mean, besides Kubernetes, you can manage other things. Uh, but I think that's more on the roadmap. It's not quite uh, there. So right now, I think the basic example is managing Kubernetes clusters. Uh, but then they're using Kubernetes resources um, on top of that. And I think longer term goal is also to manage um, some other resources that are not necessarily part of Kubernetes. Uh, so you can manage uh, things like um, nodes or or other types of clusters or other types of cloud native resources, but that's not actually uh, implemented yet as far as I know. Uh, but yeah, it, it is pretty extensive, uh, uh, mainly backed by VMware or maintainers are part of VMware. Uh, so, I mean, for Sandbox is okay, but I mean, something that in the future, um, they might want to look for maintainer diversity if they want to go for like incubation or further. All right, Emily? Um, so completely agree with everything that Ricardo said. It definitely sounds like the project has a lot of high aspirations um, for making, giving that Kubernetes like experience in other infrastructure. Um, the key call out that I want to mention here, and I don't know that we've necessarily talked about it, is they do have a slight focus on multi-tenancy, which we don't have a ton of projects that I'll that create a framework for multi-tenancy to be done by organizations or even service providers in a comprehensive fashion. So this would be one of those new additions. Um, and in particular, if the project can pull off um, being that control plane across multiple different uh, workspaces, environments, to give that Kubernetes-like experience, we could potentially see more uh, adoption of cloud-native um, technologies outside of traditional Kubernetes deployments. Sure. It, it might be also in the area of uh, other projects like Carvana that also try to do multi-cluster and manage namespaces as well in the target clusters. Yep. So I think we open a vote on this one. Is that correct, Amy? I think so. Josh has a comment, and I don't think it's ah, actually sorry. Like finished. Ah, there we go. Okay. Well, I can, I can actually say, just so you know, for history, this, um, uh, this was originally a Red Hat project. Um, and um, the main work on it has moved elsewhere. And that's one of the reasons for applying to the CNCF is that uh, they really want it to be owned by the foundation because I think there might still be pieces of it that, that Red Hat owns in a legal sense, which we will of course donate. Um, the, um, I, uh, but um, putting my Red Hat OSPO hat on instead of my tag CS hat. Um, the, um, but just so that you know the history there. Reasonable. Okay. All right. There Thank you. Your vote. Moving on. So the next one is was mock server, and I'll just open the repo because this doesn't look like it's. Uh, I don't know if you went a bit deeper, but this looks like a bit early. Is this? Uh... I I realize I'm talking a lot here, but. <laughs> Um, the maintainer of this project, maintainer singular, um, uh, was at WasmCon last week, um, and I met with him. Um, it's a desktop testing tool for um, uh, Wasm for WebAssembly server side code. Um, the um, but it does have just the single maintainer. Um, uh, who's I, I at just nine commits. Yeah, I think I think I, I, in the past for this kind of projects, we gave a message to try to build at least a minimal community and then come back or... Does I, I mean, reason? based on meeting with him, I think that would be reasonable. Um, he's basically a uh, QE who built this tool for his own use. And it's, you know, looking for a home for it because it's not his main job to maintain this tool. I think this might be a good candidate to um, shift over into the WASM working group. Yeah, Leah, that's exactly where I was going. Um, I, I would recommend still too early. 
uh, definitely worth getting them connected with the WASM working group because I think that there are a lot of interested individuals who might find this useful um, and potentially help drive some of the contributions that way. And then once they get a little bit more mature and robust and have been around longer, um, reapplying at a later date. I think they did. Uh, I, um, Katie, yeah. you posted the link there. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, they did present to the, the WASM working group. They are connected, which I think is great. Um, it's early stages. This is it. Like, I know it needs a home, but perhaps just being open source and inviting contributors might be a first good step. And then perhaps they can uh, come back. I do appreciate the the project being very ambitious early days. I think that's a very good kind of mindset to approach CNCF and understand the processes and, and be part of Sandbox. But hopefully they will grow a bit more within the next couple of months. Yeah, sounds good. So thanks, Amy. Move to the next one. So that's Copian. It's pronounced like this. And um, yeah, so this is also on the management of uh, additional Kubernetes clusters, but uh, relying on Coop Spray. Uh, so it's kind of in the same area of what we mentioned earlier with uh, KCP, I guess. I will just check because uh, I don't remember now if they already presented. Yes, they did. So, any comments? So, they did present in tag runtime. Uh, I, I think it's uh, good for incubation, uh, fairly mature for that for that level. Um, it's a little bit different from uh, KCP. Uh, where KCP is more like a control plane at a higher level. Kubean is more of a, a cluster deployment creation tool. So it actually creates uh, Kubernetes clusters and or a fleet of Kubernetes clusters and it helps uh, manage them. Uh, they rely heavily on KubeSpray, which is another open source project. Have good artwork though, that's for sure. Other comments? I mean, is there any other any reason why it couldn't be a keep spray pro project rather than an independent project if it's so tightly coupled? Well, right now they say that they support only cube spray, but maybe in the future they might support something else. But it, I mean, it's something that we can bring up uh, to them. Like if they don't, then it, then it might be good to just work with the cube spray community instead of, uh, you know, having something separate in, if they're they're only going to support cube spray. But yeah, so th that question actually came up in the, in the meeting, and they all they they said that they only support cube spray at the moment. All right, so there are some value added uh, in the sense that they actually manage the deployment of the remote clusters. There is uh, some overlap with other projects that manage control plane, like KCP and Karmada. And there is a question here asking um, to compare this to, to cluster API, which has um, which has a few few. Uh, uh, extensive answer here. So what's the suggestion here? We go back and ask them to contact Coop Spray and try to clarify this, or we suggest that them for a vote. Let's see Ricardo card unmuted. Yeah, I think uh yeah, it might be a good idea to go back uh, and, and ask them whether they're going to support something else rather than cube spray. And if not, then open it, open it up uh, to see if they want to work uh, with their community. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's also open to what other folks' um, suggestions have here too. So. I think it's entirely reasonable to send them back to have a, a meaningful discussion with Cube Spray um, to understand a little bit more about whether or not they should be homed with them 
and that they, they align really well and they're just another capability in, within that project or if they're planning on supporting more beyond that because once they once they branch out of just CubeSpray, then I think it's more applicable um, to a lot more adopters. Okay, so we asked them to clarify that, essentially contact CubeSpray and discuss this a bit further and then uh, come back to us. What what question? It, does anybody know if Qspray is or is a CNCF project or is it, is it under the Kubernetes community or, or I'm not really sure. It's under Kubernetes. Okay, so it's already working, yeah, with the Kubernetes community. So, so one one option is just to go back and work with the Kubernetes community together with Qspray. Sounds reasonable. Okay. Thank you. So we move to the next one, which is KCL, which is uh, description is constraint based record and functional lang language and tools primarily utilized in cloud native configurations and policy scenarios. So I didn't completely get uh, what the goal here was. So feel free to, to jump in, but uh, it seems to be like some sort of uh, abstraction language for uh, for um, defining these um, policies and relationships. Josh. From what I can tell, it's a DCL for managing Kubernetes clusters, kind of like uh, Ballerina um, is, if you know that commercial product. Yeah, is it kind of like uh, Pulumi or something? Or... Mm -hmm. Bell, Ballerina is it's kind of like a language. Yeah, although Pulumi goes well beyond Kubernetes clusters. So um, the um, is like Pulumi is a got a management language for all kinds of things. Um, KCL is is strictly um, Kubernetes clusters. Um, well, Kubernetes and a few other tools like Argo, um, but things on top of Kubernetes. Right. It seems to be uh, uh, have significant uh, activity and support. And I, I'm not sure from, from what you were saying, it doesn't seem like there are many projects in this area. Is that correct, Josh? I don't know. Um, I, I haven't really looked for them. Um, and there are also, they've presented that uh, tag um, in August. Uh, is Nikita here? I wanted to thank her for bringing uh, in basically in all the tickets, asking for presentations. Uh, this seems to be very effective. Um, yep. And the conclusion from seems to be that it's a good fix fit, fit for CCF sandbox. So I guess uh, it's a good, good recommendation here. We open for All right. Yeah. Ah. Capture them for a vote, moving on. So there's a question from Liu about when should projects like this be put under Kubernetes or the CNCF? It's a good question. Uh, anyone wants to jump in? I think it depends. Unfortunately, like that, that's the short answer. Um, it, it really depends on the project, what it's trying to accomplish, whether or not it's a supporting mechanism for Kubernetes or whether or not it's like its own independent project. And I think that is like, and to Josh's point, we Kubernetes accept it. So it, it's, Unfortunately, we kind of do this weird back and forth with some projects and trying to figure out where they go, but it's really dependent on their scope and what it is that they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Josh also uh, left a comment saying uh, part of the question is if Kubernetes would actually accept it. It's also a good point. I see Cassie and Ricardo are on YouTube. Yeah. Um. So, um, I, I, I think this part is uh, the goal is to simplify some the configurations and some APIs for managing the Kubernetes. 
um, they are, you know, there are other parties try to do this. So I don't know whether um, it's surely, it, I haven't dived into detail how good it is. Has this been presented to any PAC or any, or to the Kubernetes API SIG? You know, so that they know, um, yeah, that whether this is a, you know, the de design is good. Or how useful it is, my question basically is, right? It looks like it's trying to abstract uh, um, more, I mean, have more abstraction away from the infrastructure and provide more um, high level, you know, configuration APIs to do that. I think the goal is to, try to simplify that, uh, those things, but how good it is. All right, so I think we have two, two options here. Either there's a recommendation here from the tag to um, include it in the sandbox. And uh, there's also the possibility of uh, asking them to contact Kubernetes first to clarify if this is a fit. Uh, in the upstream Kubernetes project. Yeah, I think so getting some feedback from the Kubernetes community would be good. Uh, yeah, sounds good to me. I, I think there's also a little bit of over, overlap with the OPA here, Open Policy Agent. So um, maybe how, I mean, because it talks about policies, right? So and how to manage policies. So the a good question would be how different it is from that or is it the same or um, is it just for Kubernetes or, or is it trying to do more uh, besides Kubernetes, like not, you know, like other types of policies, uh, maybe yeah. policies for cloud native environments. All right. So, um, uh, Josh also left a comment uh, about probably Kubernetes is not going to take it as a sub project. So maybe we open for a vote and leave a, uh, anyway, a uh, note that they should reach out to Kubernetes to clarify this in any case. Does that sound reasonable? Uh, what do we want to be able to clarify? Uh, if this is a fit as a Kubernetes sub project or not. Uh, if we've already opened them for a vote for a sandbox yes. project, I think we leave it there. Okay, so we open for a vote. Okay, open for a vote. We'll see what happens. Time check. We've got 15 minutes. Moving on. And we only have two left, so it should be okay. Good. Yeah. So coordinator, it says it's a quality of service. <laughs> um, scheduling system bringing optimal layout and status to workloads such as microservices, web services, and big data jobs. So in this case, actually, well, having a look, um, it did feel like um, there's a lot of overlap with uh, the scheduling scheduler of Kubernetes, uh, although it introduces uh, notions like collective service. So it is interesting. Uh, if I go down, um, I don't think they this did this actually happen, Ricardo, in that runtime the presentation. Uh, no, no, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Oh wait, that's coordinator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has, it has, but I, I wasn't able to, to, yeah, to join that meeting. But, but you can take a look at the notes and see if there's, we have any. Yeah, I checked before, also I couldn't see any, any left. So I don't know if anyone uh, managed to attend. Kathy. Yeah, I, I, I went through their, you know, their web page. And the functionality, um, I think they, they they will provide some um, isolations um, for to solve some noisy neighbor problems. Um, but you know, they I think there are the other projects that are doing this. I think it's good to ask them to um, consolidate with other work streams um, in this area, um, and then come back to I mean to present to come back again. Yeah. Well, my question here is is why isn't this in in Kubernetes scheduler? I don't know if if they replied in some place. I couldn't find it though. 
Yeah, that's a that's a, that's a good question too. Um, I think because it's closely related to you know the resource scheduling. Yeah, so my suggestion is just to go back uh, and talk to the batch initi initiative uh, system uh, working group that we have on our tag runtime and also uh, work with the the batch batch. batch workload community so and then and then come back and see how they can work together with them right. and Ricardo can you put the exact name of that in the chat I know I know there's a bunch of different names for it and I want to be clear about like which one it actually is thank you uh, the group. Yeah, the bash working group. Because okay. Yeah. So Put that's more words, please. <laughs> yeah. So there's I the bash. Tell them where to go. Yeah. So there's the bash system initiative working group that Ricardo just pasted there, and then there's the Kubernetes uh, batch working group that is uh, part of six session. That's stolen. Yeah. There's also a Kubernetes six scheduler. I think. Right. This is close related to that. So they can probably present there. Two. I'll start with tag runtime because it's always best to be able to give them one. Happy to be able to have more comments on the issue as well. So, okay. So, but I guess the decision is to um, pass them these contacts and ask uh, to come back with more clarifications later. Okay. All right. And the last one we have is uh, Kairos. Um, so this is a meta Linux distribution to build immutable edge Kubernetes. And from my quick uh, uh, check with the project, this seems to be relying on build kits to, to build those images um, for, for, for these different environments. We'll check quickly on... Yeah, this we have a presentation on Thursday in tag runtime. So we, we haven't presented yet. So should we um, move it to the next one after they've presented at that one time? Is it sound reasonable? Or do you want to discuss it now? I think That's I would right. like the recommendation from the tag before moving this into a vote. This has a lot of interesting opportunities, but I think having that uh, domain deep dive would be beneficial. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Also, this this part it is to build a, a another immutable Linux distribution. Is that Linux layer or Linux OS be part of the um do we have any project like this? Which is like a, a Linux distribution. Yeah, but there's there's a whole space behind these uh, special purpose uh, operating systems. So we also we have also created a special purpose operating system working group. So that the possibility is also open to work with with that working group. Uh, but yeah, so there's other projects in that space like um, Flatcar and Talos, and I think there's some some other specific uh, Linux distributions um, uh, that that overlap with this. Okay. And uh, there's one specific to the edge, right? So, but, but I think it might be a good idea to hear uh, what they have to say in a presentation. Yeah, okay, sounds great, thank you. It might also be beneficial to have the project um, present or invite some of the tag security members over um, to the project presentation and tag run time. There are some uh, zero touch, uh, uh, zero trust kind of concepts that are being integrated within the project. Um, based off of some of their white papers. I haven't read through them all, but um, good idea probably to cross-pollinate between the two tags on this project. Sounds good. We'll we'll advertise uh, in the tag security Slack channel. So, yeah. Thanks. And I think that's it. We're done. That wraps us up for today. Yeah. Thank you very much.